There have been plenty of different, talented individuals who have left their mark on the Assassin's Creed franchise. Over a month ago, I made a video focusing on the creation of AC and how it came to be. In that video, I focused mainly on the original three creators, Jade Raymond, Corey May, and most importantly, Patrice Desile. I also mentioned how none of those three creators are still at Ubisoft. But there has been an individual just as important and crucial to this franchise. He's written some of the best stories in the entire series and practically saved this franchise on multiple occasions with his writing. He even managed to take the mess of modern day stories from all the different games and connect it all together in an incredibly engaging modern day story in Valhalla. His name is Darby McDevitt. Now, a lot of you probably know who Darby is. He's left a big impact on this series, and I bring him up quite a lot in my videos whenever discussing one of the AC games he wrote. And he may not be one of the original founders of Assassin's Creed, like Patrice, Jade, or Corey, but his role in the series has been just as vital. And there's truly nobody more qualified to overlook the future of the Assassin's Creed series. But before before we delve into how exactly Darby saved Assassin's Creed and his position at Ubisoft, let's start with where it all began for him. So Darby's first writing credit goes all the way back to 2002 for EA, where he wrote the story for a movie tie-in game, Lord of the Rings The Two Towers, for the Game Boy Advance. For several years, Darby would continue to write for these types of games, including Where the Wild Things Are, and even The Sims 2 for the Nintendo DS. That was until 2009, where he was hired at Ubisoft to write the story for another DS game, Assassin's Creed 2 Discovery. Darby worked with Corey May, who I mentioned earlier, one of the original creators of Assassin's Creed, and essentially the brainchild and narrative genius for those stories we got in the early days of the series, until he left the company after Syndicate in 2015. But since Corey May developed the story for AC2, Darby collaborated with him to get a sense of the story. He did his research, and finished writing the game within four weeks. Now, I've never played this game personally, but as I was researching for this video, someone asked Darby about his thoughts on AC2 Discovery, where he expressed a bit of regret and disappointment with it because he felt like he had misunderstood Ezio's character, writing him to be stern and serious, kind of like Altair. And of course, we all know, Ezio isn't much like that at all. Darby also contributed as a writer to Assassin's Creed Bloodlines, the Altair spin-off PSP game, it seemed these smaller spin-off games were kind of his specialty back then. That was, however, until he began work on his next DS game, Assassin's Creed Lost Legacy. For those who don't know what Lost Legacy is, it was announced at E3 2010 as an AC game for, at the time, new 3DS, which would release the following following year, and Darby with all his experience with these kinds of games was in charge of making another Ezio story. However, AC Lost Legacy was soon after silently cancelled, and lots of the content and work put into it would then be diverted over into its own full AAA game, Assassin's Creed Revelations. So Darby jumped from working on a 3DS game to becoming a lead writer on a main entry and getting to conclude the Ezio trilogy. This was his biggest opportunity yet, and he did not disappoint. Assassin's Creed Revelations, to this day, is credited as one of the best stories in the series by many. And the positive feedback is what really took Darby's career to new heights. He then got to write the story for Assassin's Creed Embers, the short film which served as the final act to Ezio's story. And I gotta say, considering Darby did 
didn't even create Ezio and misunderstood his character in AC2 Discovery, he did an incredible job rectifying that and giving Ezio the ending he deserved in both Revelations and Embers. He came to understand the character more than anyone. His next opportunity would come in serving as a narrative consultant for Assassin's Creed 3. There was also talks of him writing for an AC3 DLC that would focus on naval missions and Connor's grandfather, Edward Kenway, which as we then know would eventually become its own game in Black Flag, where Darby would be the lead writer. Once again, AC Black Flag was an incredibly well-received game, still a lot of people's favorite in the series, and of course just recently we discovered it's now getting a remake. I'd have to imagine Darby would be involved in this remake, considering he wrote the original story, and to this day, Black Flag is still the game Darby is most proud of, and his personal favorite of all the ones he's worked on. Darby was soon kind of one of the heads of Assassin's Creed's overall narrative, kind of like Corey May. He was brought onto Assassin's Creed Unity to aid writers Cameron Labine and Russell Lees, where he was allowed to rewrite and recharacterize Napoleon in the story. Darby had happened to already be researching Napoleon for a project he was interested in, plus he had such a deep fascination with who he was as a person. And when he noticed the character in Unity as he was originally written wasn't very accurate to the kind of person he truly was, Darby was allowed to rewrite his scenes entirely. After Unity, he then served as a narrative consultant on AC Origins as well. However, he soon after left, midway through the development of Origins, to work on a new IP. But Darby would return again in full force to be the narrative director on AC Valhalla. Now say what you will about AC Valhalla as a game as a whole, but you can still very clearly see the quality of Darby McDevitt's writing and genius within the story. He created some fantastic characters, including my personal favorite of the game, Basim, who's of course now getting his own game with Mirage, and for me, most importantly, he managed to make the modern day storyline interesting once again. Ever since Desmond had sadly passed in AC3, the modern day stories in Assassin's Creed became a bit of a mess. I really enjoyed enjoyed Black Flags, again, no surprise there considering Darby wrote it, but outside of that, there was just no form of cohesion like there was in the modern day arc from AC1 to AC3. But that changed with Valhalla, continuing the story of Layla while managing to connect it to the stories of the earliest AC games, bringing back old characters, and even Desmond himself in a way. He intentionally wanted to mirror the modern day of of AC3, where it felt like the story was building to a climax with another world-threatening event. However, with some different characters and choices along the way. Again, Darby said he intentionally wanted it to mirror AC3's modern day so as to show history doesn't repeat, but it does rhyme. It was a fantastic way to merge storylines in a way that made sense. And I can't wait to see the future of that story play out over the next several several years. He also wrote so much of the lore for the Izu and First Civilization, along with all the stuff involving the Norse reincarnations. I'll be honest, I still don't fully understand all of it, but Darby created some very deep lore for Valhalla. But shortly after the release of Valhalla in March of 2021, tragedy struck. Darby left Ubisoft. He wanted to work on something new and unknown, and I remember when this news broke, a lot of AC fans had lost hope. Darby is one of the few writers left from the Ezio days, and considering he was involved with some of the best games in the series, and had essentially kept the series alive and interesting, there was a lot of concern, rightfully so, when he left. Thankfully though, he would then return later in the year, in November of 2021, where he expressed excitement about getting to further explore Assassin's Creed and write some new stories. We don't really know the full extent of why he returned, but I'm just so thankful that he did. He's now writing the story for one of the upcoming AC games, Codename Hexy, that is supposed
supposedly going to be quite different from anything we've experienced in Assassin's Creed before. Darby McDevitt has saved this franchise in more ways than one. Whether it's reviving player interest with his engaging stories, or managing to weave and connect other writers' work into something cohesive. It seems like whenever he's involved in an AC-related project, there's a massive positive impact. Even if he's just serving as consultant, it gives me more faith in a game's story. He also happens to be one of the only people working on Assassin's Creed games who goes out of his way to communicate with the community. Just several months ago, he did a Ask Me Anything on Reddit, where he talked about all things Assassin's Creed and answered a lot of fans' questions. It's rare to see someone in a larger company or IP like AC go out of their way to interact with the community. His passion and love for this franchise is so evident in his work. He's one of the few people left at Ubisoft who understands Assassin's Creed and was there almost from the beginning. There's nobody better to lead the future stories of this franchise, and let's pray he's staying for the foreseeable future. Even now, Basm, the character he created, is leading the way in Assassin's Creed Mirage. Darby, if you're watching this, which you're probably not, but regardless, thank you. This series would look far different and likely far worse without your contributions. Regardless of if you knew of Darby McDevitt or not, I feel it's important to put names and faces to those responsible for some of the great games in the series, so we can show our appreciation. Let me know if you guys learned anything new and your thoughts on the future of the Assassin's Creed franchise. Like I said before, I really like making more informative, retrospective videos like this, so let me know if you'd like to see more like it. As always, if you enjoyed the video, I'd appreciate it if you left a like, and consider subscribing to the channel if you're new. Special thank you to my members for supporting me, and other than that, thanks for watching, and have a great rest of your day, Assassins.